Clinton Eastwood Jr. was born May 31, 1930 in San Francisco, to Clinton Eastwood Sr. and Ruth Wood. He grew up in nearby Piedmont. At school, Clint took interest in music and mechanics, but was an otherwise bored student. This resulted in being held back a grade. In 1949, the year he is said to have graduated from high school, his parents and younger sister Jean moved to Seattle. Clint spent a couple years in the Pacific Northwest himself, operating Log Bronx in Springfield, Oregon, with summer gigs lifeguarding in Renton, Washington. Returning to California in 1951, he did a two-year stint at Fort Ord Military Reservation and later enrolled at Los Angeles City College, but dropped out to pursue acting. During the mid-1950s he landed uncredited bit parts in such B-films as Revenge of the Creature and Tarantula. In 1958, he landed his first consequential acting role in the long-running TV show Rawhide with Eric Fleming. Although only a secondary player the first seven seasons, he was promoted to series star when Fleming departed both literally and figuratively in its final year, along the way becoming a recognizable face to television viewer around the country. Eastwood's big screen breakthrough came as the man with no name in Sergio Leone's trilogy of excellent spaghetti westerns, A Fistful of Dollars in 1964, For a Few Dollars More in 1965, and The Good, The Bad and The Ugly in 1966. The movies were shown exclusively in Italy during their respective copyright years with Enrico Maria Salerno providing the voice of Eastwood's character, finally getting American distribution in 1967-68. As the last film racked up respectable grosses, Eastwood rose from a barely registering actor to sought-after commodity in just a matter of months. Again a success was the late blooming star's first US-made western, Hang, M. High. He followed that up with the lead role in Coogan's Bluff, before playing second fiddle to Richard Burton in the World War II epic where Eagles Dare and Lee Marvin in the bizarre musical Paint Your Wagon. In two mules for sister Sarah and Kelly's heroes, Eastwood leaned in an experimental direction by combining tough guy action with offbeat humor. 1971 proved to be his busiest year in film. He starred as a sleazy Union soldier in The Beguiled to critical acclaim, and made his directorial debut with the classic erotic thriller play Mishti for Me. His role as the hard-edged police inspector in Dirty Harry, meanwhile, boosted him to cultural icon status. Eastwood put out a steady stream of entertaining movies thereafter, The Western's Joe Kid, High Plains Drifter and The Outlaw Josie Wales, the Dirty Harry sequels Magnum Force and The Enforcer, the action-packed road adventures Thunderbolt and Lightfoot and The Gauntlet, and the prison film Escape from Alcatraz. He branched out into the comedy genre in 1978 with Every Which Way But Lose, which became the biggest hit of his career up to that time, taking inflation into account, it still is. In short, the Iger sanction notwithstanding, the 1970s were non-stop success for Eastwood. Eastwood kicked off the 1980s with Any Which Way You Can, the blockbuster sequel to Every Which Way But Lose. The fourth Dirty Harry film, Sudden Impact, was the highest grossing film of the franchise and spawned his trademark catchphrase, Make My Day. He also starred in Bronco Billy, Firefox, Tightrope, City Heat, Pale Rider and Heartbreak Ridge, all of which were solid hits, with Hong Kai Tonk Man being his only commercial failure of the period. In 1988, he did his fifth and final Dirty Harry movie, The Dead Pool. Although it was a success overall, it did not have the box office punch the previous films had. About this time, with outright bombs like Pink Cadillac and The Rookie, it seemed Eastwood's star was declining as it never had before. He then started taking on Loki projects, directing Bird, a biopic of Charlie Parker that earned him a Golden Globe, and starring in and directing White Hunter Black Heart, an uneven, loose biopic of John Huston. Eastwood bounced back big time with his dark western Unforgiven in 1992, which garnered the then 62-year-old his first ever Academy Award nomination for Best Actor, and an Oscar win for Best Director. 
Churning out a quick follow-up hit, he took on the Secret Service in In the Line of Fire, then accepted second villain for the first time since 1970 in the interesting but poorly received A Perfect World with Kevin Costner. Next was a love story, The Bridges of Madison County, where Eastwood surprised audiences with a sensitive performance alongside none other than Meryl Streep. But it soon became apparent he was going backwards after his brief revival. Subsequent films were credible, but nothing really stuck out. Absolute Power and Space Cowboys did well enough, while True Crime and Blood Work were received badly, as was Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, which he directed but didn't appear in. Eastwood surprise again in the mid-2000s, returning to the top of the A-list with Million Dollar Baby. Also starring Hilary Swank and Morgan Freeman, the hugely successful drama won four Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Director for Eastwood. He scored his second Best Actor nomination, too. His next starring vehicle, Gran Torino, earned almost $30 million in its opening weekend and was his highest grosser unadjusted for inflation. 2012 saw him in a rare light-hearted movie, Trouble with the Curve, as well as a reality show, Mrs. Eastwood and Company. Between acting jobs, he chalked up an impressive list of credits behind the camera. He directed Mystic River, Flags of Our Fathers, Letters from Iwo Jima, Changeling, and Victus. Hereafter, J. Edgar, Jersey Boys, American Sniper, Sully and the 1517 to Paris. Back on screens after a considerable absence, he played an unlikely drug courier in The Mule, which reached the top of the box office with a nine-figure gross, then directed Richard Jewell. At age 91, Eastwood made history as the oldest actor to star above the title in a movie with the release of Cry Macho. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the channel for more interesting videos.